Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about penicillins. We're going to discuss their mechanism of action, structure and structure activity relationship. To begin with, we need to take a general look on penicillins. So they are beta-lactam antibiotics and we're going to discuss what we mean by beta-lactam. They are bacterial cell wall inhibitors, so their target is the cell wall of the bacteria. And they are bactericidal, so they are killing agent. So how really penicillin works? They inhibit the cell wall formation by binding to transamidase, which is the enzyme that is responsible for cross-linking reaction in the cell wall also known as penicillin binding protein, or transpeptidase in some books. This bindings of the penicillin and the enzyme inhibit the enzyme from uh, performing its regular function, so from cross-linking the peptidoglycan monomers, which results in weak and fragile cell wall. The cell wall is a peptidoglycan structure that is made of repeating unit of NAM, which is the N-acetyl mumeric acid, and NAG, N-acetyl glucosamine. And this two chains of peptidoglycan must be linked by a peptide bond to make the cell wall strong and fixed. And this is done by the enzyme, the transamidase enzyme. Pelicillin here target this enzyme, inhibiting its function, and this results in, uh, as we said, a weak cell wall, which is no longer able to prevent the cell from swelling and lysis. But how really penicillin do that? In order to understand their mechanism of action, we need to look at their structure first. So their structure, you can see here, we have a general penicillin structure. First, we need to take a look at the very um, important one, which is the beta-lactam ring here. So beta-lactam. Word lactam means it's a cyclic amide. So you can see here the amide in a cycle form. And the beta in any carboxylic acid or carboxylic acid derivatives we have a carbon that is adjacent to the carbonyl carbon known as the alpha carbon. And we have another carbon that is next to alpha carbon known as the beta. Here in this uh, ring, you see that the amide is attached to the beta and thus the beta lactam where it come from. This four membered ring is attached to five membered ring known as the thiazolidine. Thia means there is a sulfur present in the ring. Also, we have carboxylic acid substitution here. And on the other side, we have an amide as well. And an acyl side chain that may vary depending on the fermentation medium, leading to different examples that all belong to penicillin family. The skeleton of the molecule suggests that it is derived from two main amino acids, which are cysteine, shown here, and valine. If we combine them together, we get something called the 6-amino penicillinic acid, or 6-APA, which is just exactly as the penicillin here without the acyl set chain. So if we add to 6-APA the acyl side chain, we can get different form of a penicillin. So that means the 6-ABA here act as starting material for semi-synthetic process of making penicillin. Still after we discuss the structure of a penicillin, we can't really know how it works, how it can bind to the enzyme and prevent it from working 
uh, and cross-linking the wall. What actually makes the penicil able to bind to the transamidase is the unique thing about it. Shows similarity in structure to a D-alanine, D-alanine part in the NAM. So let's see here a one chain of peptidoglycan. In this chain, we have the NAM that has multiple of amino acids, and at the end you can see 2DL, 2DL. The transpeptidase enzyme or the penicillin binding protein come and binds to this D-alanine. It cleaves the bones between the 2D alanine, leading to loss of 1D alanine, which is the terminal one. So we will lose one of the D alanine here. So the, now the structure will be not 2D alanine, instead, it will be 1D alanine linked to O enzyme. So link to the enzyme now. Then what next happens, another uh, peptidoglycan chain that is preformed in the cell will reach the cell wall site. And the fifth glycine of the NAM will now come and attack, making the enzyme leaving. So now we will have D-alanine, one D-alanine that is bound to glycine through a peptide bond. And this is how they are linked together. So if we have another now um, chain of peptidoglycan, you will have the very terminal glycine of the NAM will be attached to another D-alanine here, and so on. So because penicillin has a similar structure to the D-alanine, D-alanine, the enzyme might um, think of penicillin as D-alanine, D-alanine as its site of action and combine to it. This binding of penicillin to the enzyme is irreversible, which means once the penicillin is bound to the enzyme, the enzyme can't be uh, relieved and the bacteria cell need to synthesize a new enzymes to produce this action. After we discussed the structure and the mechanism of action of a penicillin separately, now it's the time to combine them together to study their structure activity relationship. We have the here the structure of penicillin and we have five essential parts here. We have first the beta lactam ring that is a must. We have also a cis conformation here. You can see the hydrogen is hiding there. So the cis conformation, because the two most important groups are at the same site. So it's cis, it's a must. And also you can see this here, the carboxylic acid is also essential. as well as the bicyclic uh, ring. Penicillin usually uh, folded in, in a way that the beta-lactam ring is a flat and the thiazolidine ring is pushed up. So it looks like half a book. See? This is how actually it, it is. Um, configurated in a space and because of that you can see the angle here is minimized in the state of having a 120 angle it is minimized which increases the angle strain so you can say that the penicillin is a highly unstable and highly strained pycyclic system and this is very very important for the activity Without the strain in the structure, the penicillin won't be active, and thus there will be no action, no killing of bacteria. 
Also, the amide structure here is essential as well. And um, the sulfur here is usually present, but it's not an essential. It can uh, vary, but very minimum variation is possible. The only thing that can vary a lot is the uh, R side chain. Other than that, the five main things here must be present in each penicillin in order to behave like a penicillin. This leads us to the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to discuss the problems we face with penicillin and their solutions. If you have any question, please leave a comment. Thank you for watching.